Hello and welcome to 409 Sports X's and O's. I am your host, Mike Canizales, and joining me at this time is none other than Lamar head baseball coach, Will the Thrill Davis. Will, great to have you in yeah, the studio, Thanks sir. for having me, Mike. Yeah, How's everything been going, sir? It's been going good. Yeah, we're, good. we're excited about starting. Yeah, we've been every year, I think when you start practicing on January 15th, it feels like you don't have enough time, but you get to about right now, it's like, all right, can we play somebody else now? There we go. There we go. So for the folks at home that don't know much about you, just uh, go ahead and chat me up. What was life like before Lamar University? Yeah, so I, I'm son of a college coach, uh, Randy Davis, my dad, and um, played at LSU and coached at LSU for eight years after that, and then got the head coaching job at Lamar and been here ever since. So with the head coaching job at Lamar, you know, your first season came out the gates very strong, 33 yeah. wins. Now, the past two seasons haven't gone quite your way. They've been, you know, back-to-back -back losing seasons. So what do you feel is going to take for this year's squad to get over that hump? Yeah, um, Mike, I think, you know, when I, when I came in, I was very fortunate. I inherited a very good senior class, and, and like you said, we had a really good season that, that first year, and then kind of knew when, get, once I got here that two years out, we were kind of going to be completely uh, starting over, and that's what we did. We started over, and we uh, – it's like building a house, you know, you, every, and every player is a brick, and I, I wouldn't be a coach if I didn't use cliches, so that's <laughs> – That's right. That's the one I'll use, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, every single player that we've – I look out on the field now, and I think about – what it took to get them in recruiting, and, and now through the development that we've put in, uh, myself and my staff, um, it, it's. I think the house is almost ready to be, to, to roll, and I think uh, the last two years have been uh, challenging, obviously in the win loss column, but at the same time we've been developing this this group, and um, now we're the experienced ones, so we're hoping to have similar results as we did that first year. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I mean, you got seven returning starters, a reloaded pitching staff. You know, how has the off season been for you guys? It's been good. It started out uh, with really the good luck. As soon as the season ended, the, the good luck started happening. You know, we were very fortunate. We didn't lose anybody in the draft. Um, J.C. Correa went in the 38th round and decided to return for his senior season. And then we, one of our incoming recruits, Zach Bravo, was drafted in the 29th round by the Rays. And um, we were very fortunate that he turned down $100,000 to come to Lamar. And, and um, you know, so that we had a, basically came in with a full, you know, bolstered roster. And uh, the injuries have been pretty pretty minimal, you know, not, not very many key ones. And so we're, we're going in pretty strong and looking forward to the season. So whenever you see, you know, players like that, that just say, you know what, I'm going to turn down money, six figures, to come back to Lamar. You know, what does that say about you as a coach and for this university and where it's going? Well, you know, I, I think if anything about me as a coach, I'd say that at least if I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> then it's, it, at least it's not a toxic environment. You know, because I don't think anybody would come to that kind of environment. I think it's a good environment. That our guys enjoy being in. We haven't lost hardly any players really to other schools, uh, to junior colleges or that kind of thing. We haven't lost any tr guys transferring out. And so that's allowed us to build a nice foundation. And, um, you know, it, but one thing is that those guys, the, the kids that, that came back that, or turned down the draft like Zach Bravo did, um, know that they can increase their stock by having another good year here at Lamar. And so um, that's a challenge that we kind of take with them. And it's, it's on us as a coaching staff to help them improve that stock. Now, who would you say right now is sticking out to you? Uh, who's ahead of the pack right now? On our team? On your team. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we got a very veteran team, so obviously JC is, is great. Anthony Curion um, is a preseason all-conference pick by Perfect Game that was announced uh, this morning. Um, Chase Kemp uh, had a, couple, a rough couple of freshman and sophomore years, but really turned the corner this summer. He's from uh, first baseman from Needle in High School. Uh, was MVP of the Texas Collegiate League. Yep. And then uh, on the mound, we brought in a bunch of junior college guys, including, including Zach Bravo, uh, Trevin Michael, Austin Faith, Max Mize. These are three guys that have really started to kind of, you know, step forward into the forefront, look like guys that we'll be counting on pretty heavily. So with your senior squad this year, what are you hoping that they are able to pass down to the younger generation? Yeah, well, it's crazy. We are a pretty veteran team, but we only have six seniors, yeah. you know, and so we are still, I guess, relatively, not young, but we don't, you know, we don't yeah. lose a lot. So that's, we're very fortunate that this is pretty much a two-year team. Yep. But we do have some key guys that are seniors. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, especially Cole Coker and Cole Girard are the only two guys that have been here for all four years. And I think they're ready to go out on top. And um, they really kind of personify what we want in student athletes at Lamar. And, um, you know, both are great kids who have made great sacrifices for the team and put the team first. And, you know, I really want to see them go out on top as well. So I know you talked about, you know, this, how this team is starting to come to fruition right now. You guys, since you have been here, you always had a very high recruiting class. How in the world are you able to get kids to come to Beaumont, Texas <laughs> and Lamar University? Well, you know, it's all about, you know, it's all about the South. I think Beaumont has a lot to offer, and uh, I don't think we need to sell that short at all. Yeah. And, you know, hey, Lamar University is a great kept secret, and uh, it seems like every couple weeks we're on some new list that's come out, coming out of you know one of the top rising universities in the country or top programs and 
Um, Dr. Evans has really done a good job with just increasing, increasing the overall university, um, the aesthetics with lots of new buildings, and um, it makes it a you know, really nice place um, you know, to, to tour kids around and stuff. And I think for the local people that haven't been in, in a while, they should pr probably go check it out because I think they'll be surprised to see what they've, what they've been missing out on. No, I mean, I, I, I couldn't agree more, and, and that gets to my next question. You know, it's with Lamar University, it's with the, the buildings that it has, and it's just, it is all state-of-the-art right now. So how is it that you get this team to consistently compete year after year? Uh, at least, at least be, beyond this season and on the future. Yeah, I think it's what, what you said, uh, Mike. It's re, it's recruiting, you know, and um, you know the, the the timetable of Coach Gilligan retiring and me taking over it left a little bit of a void in the recruiting mm -hmm. vacuum. You know, anytime you have a transition like that. So fortunately, now that I'm I'm here, um, you know, I've got I'm able to forecast out when we're going to have you yeah. know you know big time recruiting needs. Like for instance, we'll need a big 2021 recruiting class, yep. which we've already started on. We got a commitment last night, and so. Uh, I, I'm hoping, you know, we don't have any that kind of um, vacuum again, really, and we yeah. shouldn't, you know, obviously with, with our whole staff being intact and, and hitting the roads and recruiting two years out like, like we are right now. And so if we can continue to do that, and, and, the, and it's not just about recruiting, you know, nobody wants to be Mr. You know, November, you know, <laughs> you want right. you know, to you you get the job done in the spring. And so, you know, player development is key, too, and getting these guys in here and developing them and, uh, is, is key. And, and um, you know, so we have to do a good job with that, too. But obviously it starts with recruiting, you know, it's – the difference between 2017 when we did win 33 yep. games in, in the last two years is, um, you know, we had good players. It's not we didn't have good players the last two years. Yep. They were just inexperienced. And so, you know, when you have good players, you get good results like that. I didn't all of a sudden change my philosophy on the way I coach and, and, and get worse as a coach over the last two <laughs> years, you know. Um, we had a good year that year because of the players. You know, it's nothing that I'm doing. And, and um, you know, we hope to regain that this year and, and, you know, continue to do that going forward. So who would you consider a Will Davis kind of guy? When you are recruiting these kids, what exactly are you looking for? I think the biggest thing is I'm looking for is guys that love to play, you know, and because and we, we practice a lot. And I don't consider it really practice. I consider it playing. You know, we're out there playing a lot. And, I mean, I want guys that want to develop and, and are interested in, in developing their baseball talents because we're here for them a lot. Yep. You know, the coaching staff um, – we're out there on the field all day. You know, we, we maximize our time um, that the NCAA gives us by doing small groups but and, and milking the, the as much as we can out of each player. Um, and so it, it's a long day for the coaches. And if we don't have guys that, that aren't excited about that and they're just, you know, not that interested in baseball or maybe they just played it because they were good at it, yeah. um, you know, that's not something that we're looking for. We're looking for guys that, that want to be out there with us and, and develop those skills. And I think you can kind of tell that in the recruiting process by who plays the game hard and who does things the right way and, you know, who's, who's interested in getting better. Now, with recruitment, especially in, in southeast Texas here, you know, who, who would you say – I'm going to kind of put you on the hot seat <laughs> here a little bit. Who would you say high school-wise is really developing their players to possibly get to a Lamar University? You know, I don't want to say, like, one or the other just yeah. because I don't want to um, – you know, I, I don't know what goes on in those yeah. schools to say whether it's player development or just yeah. – uh, uh, whether they're lucky to have, you know, good players in yeah. their backyard, because obviously that's something that goes into it too. But, you know, since I've been here, there's a lot of schools that produce a lot of Division One players. You know, Bridge City comes to mind, Port Natchez, obviously. Yep. Um, Harden Jefferson is kind of on the rise since, since I've gotten over here. I didn't really hear much about them when I first got mm -hmm. over, and they've, they're, they've got quite a few D1 guys. Uh, Kelly, occasionally Westbrook, Nederland, and it's a – you know, it's not the biggest area in the world to choose from as far as a pop population wise, like a Houston, but yeah. the, the population that we do have is a, a very good baseball talent uh, rich one. So, yeah. you know, we can get some players from, from this area, and, and, and uh, a lot of the leaders on our team are guys from this area. So, let's talk about, you know, your guys' non conference schedule. I mean, you got games against Baylor, Rice, LSU, AM, Texas. How does a non conference schedule like this help you guys get prepped for the Southland Conference? Yeah, you know, I think two years ago uh, we weren't ready for that at all. You know, when you're when you're young and, and you're facing those kinds of opponents, you know, it can be. You know, as coaches, our whole coaching staff obviously has coached in these environments before, so we don't think of anything different. And so it, it's hard for us to put ourselves in the players' shoes. You know, who maybe they were playing. You know, the, these teams I just named last year: Harden, Jefferson, and, yeah. <laughs> and and Bridge City. And we we take it for granted that when they go to Dish Falk in Austin and play Texas, that's a big deal to yep. them. You know, and there might be some nerves and and that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, so that can be a, a catch-22. But when you're a veteran team like we are, and last year, you know, we, we felt fared pretty well. We only won one of those games, which was against TCU. You know, we were fortunate enough to beat them at the end of the year last year. But we, we played LSU and Texas and Texas A&M pretty tough and were in all those games and could have easily won those games. And so, 
you know, I think this year with everybody back, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, obviously those, one thing it's going to do is those teams, they, they usually have really good arms, really good pitchers. And so, uh, you know, we see pitching that's maybe a tick better than what we're going to see in the Southland Conference, you know, but by and large, there's obviously some, some yep. guys in the Southland Conference that are very good, but, uh, you know, one through 10 on a staff, you know, Texas and Texas A&M and LSU are usually, you know, going to have better guys than, than we are just because of resources and whatnot. So, um, you know, it, it gets us our, gets our guys prepared and gets us ready to go for Southland Conference play when you're seeing such good arms, you know, so frequently. So when you see, when you're looking at the Southland Conference this year, who who is it in your mind that's sticking out currently right now? Well, you know, I think and even though Sam Houston had a coaching change, I think that they're the team to beat until they're not. You know, I mean, that's, you know, they, they obviously change coaches, but I think it's one of those things where, you know, they've won the conference four or five years in a row now. So it's, it's you know, somebody's got to dethrone them and they've got some good players coming back. Uh, Colton Kowser is a sophomore that was on Team USA. He's one of the best play one of the best hitters in the country. Uh, he's our preseason uh, hitter of the year, and um, they got another guy named Jack Rogers is a middle of the, legit middle of the order hitter. So, you know, I, I, I look at them, Sam Houston. They're, they're the ones that you got to dethrone. So, and until you, until regardless of a coaching change or not a coaching change, until someone beats them, you know, they're they're the ones with the bullseye on their back. Now you talked about earlier about your coach philosophy. You know how it's not going to change, but. As you know, when it comes to coaching, you, know, you guys are doing more than just what happens on the field. Right. How are you trying to get these guys prepared for life outside of the game and yeah. once they graduate? You know, obviously, um, we do. A, Tara Austin is our academic advisor. She does a great job um, making sure the guys are doing what they're supposed to do in the classroom. Even if when they come here, all they care about is playing baseball as 18-year-olds, we still get them on track to, to graduate. And so that... Um, you know, maybe if they're not mature enough at 18 to realize that by the time they're 21, they go, oh, they look up and go, oh, well, I got 30 hours left before I actually have a college degree. And obviously, we all know the benefits of that, what can, how that can help them in life. And uh, Marco Bourne, our athletic department, does a great job. They put a bunch of guest speakers together. Our freshmen and sophomores had one Monday night. Our juniors and seniors are uh, at one right now. So, and we actually have a sports psychologist coming in tomorrow to talk to, to our guys uh, after practice. So we do a lot of that kind of life skills stuff to, you know, help them. And it gives them a Although I like to think I know everything and could be the, <laughs> the, the great and powerful voice in their life, uh, you know, it's great to get that different perspective and, you know, hear from different people for them. And, um, you know, because it's such a, um, you know, prime time in their lives and they're developing as not just baseball players, but as humans. So, um, you know, hopefully they, they come out of here as better men. I think, I think they do. I hope they do. Couldn't have said it better myself there, Coach. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, guys, we are going to take our very first break, but when we get back, we're going to discuss the Astros that is hired, Dusty Baker, Super Bowl predictions, Kobe Bryant, and maybe our talk about our love about Saved by the Bell. We'll come <laughs> right back to you next. a very special edition of X's and O's. I am here with Lamar Head baseball coach Will Davis. Now, this is the time of the show, Will, where we like to have a little bit of fun. You know, okay. let's no longer <laughs> talk about Lamar in the season. Tell you what, today, the biggest news right now, Houston Astros, Dusty Baker. Right, yeah. I've seen a couple of guys, our bosses were not big fans of it. I actually, oh, okay. I, I actually love the fact that they hired Dusty Baker. What is your opinion, sir, on the Baker hire? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't know Dusty personally. Um, I've got a connection with Astros, as a lot of people know, to yep. Alex Bregman. Now, I used to be Alex Bregman and Will Harris, but now Will's gone to the Nationals and yep. uh, for $24 measly million dollars. But, um, <laughs> it can have a dollar. <laughs> Um, no, the only, I've heard nothing but great things about Dusty. Um, when I was at LSU as an assistant, um, Coach Maneri, our head coach, his best friend, is uh, Jim Hendry, who used to be the general manager of the Cubs. Mm -hmm. And he hired uh, uh, Dusty Baker as a manager there and had nothing but great things to say about him. So I've always just kind of, from the outside looking in, had a really high opinion of him. So hopefully it works out. Yeah, I mean, I take a look at a guy like Dusty Baker. I mean, he's definitely a, a player's coach, and I feel like he was the right guy just due to the fact of, all that veteran experience, no introduction needed, and, and he, he's the right kind of guy that I can handle the media 
pressure, at least over for the next one to two years. I know right now we saw as a one-year deal, second-year option. But, yeah, for, for right now, I think he is the best guy for the job. Now, I know analytics-wise, it's always been kind of like, uh, maybe, maybe not there. But yeah. we'll see. There. I mean, you know, with everything that's gone on, what, what are your thoughts on that whole scandal there, sir? You know, it's funny. A lot of people ask me this question. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad that if they were, you know, they were cheating, obviously, that it was found out. Yeah. I reserve judgment on how harsh, you know, you look at them because we yep. don't really know the scope of the whole thing with yeah. who all was cheating. I've heard other things <laughs> from players that I've coached, you know, that, that ended up playing in the big leagues and things that would surprise you. So, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't think, obviously, it's never good to cheat, and I would not want something like that to happen to, against us of at course. Lamar. And so um, it's, winning baseball games is hard enough. Um, you know, you don't want to be obviously having teams having uh, access to that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I don't know how many teams were, were cheating. So I'm not going to sit here and hold the Astros in this great. Say everybody great was doing it because, you know, we, we truly don't know. I mean, I think that's the, the general, you know, conception is that, yes, perception that is that it is everybody, but we truly don't. We, we really don't. We're, we're all just no, throwing yeah, darts, so. hoping something sticks anyway. Yeah, I'm going to watch baseball regardless. So, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm just let's get it over with and move on. I, mean, I look at it like this. I mean, the steroid era was <laughs> perhaps maybe my, my favorite era. And everybody, literally, almost pretty much everybody was glued to the TVs. I mean, every you could be watching a, The Simpsons on Fox. All of a sudden, we, we got to cut in here to St. Louis. You know, right. here comes Mark McGuire. That was some of the best times watching them in my life. And I had the chance to go see McGuire and Sosa that year at the Dome and by God, the flash photography there just for McGuire whenever whenever Randy Johnson yeah. was pitching to him, ooh, it was crazy. I know, yeah, it's crazy. It's funny to look back now and, and yeah. we see them playing and think, wow, how did we not think something was up back then? Because those guys look like <laughs> right. those look like the WWE guys now. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, well, it's fine. I'm glad you brought the WWE. <laughs> Speaking of the WWE, you know, uh, at Ashley's wedding, we were talking about, you know, all the just the craziness stuff that I have. Because in case you don't actually watch me in my highlights, I do love to, like to throw a lot of pop culture stuff just to kind of separate me for, from everybody else. <laughs> You're a big WWE guy. It's really old school guy. Who oh, was, yeah, who, old school. Who was your favorite growing up? Man, um, probably Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was great. <laughs> I mean, they were all great. I mean, the Ultimate yeah. Warrior and, yeah, I mean, Hulk Hogan, obviously. And there were so many good ones. And. Yeah, yeah, the first time I caught the uh, the football, the first time ever that I was not recruiting on a Friday night after yeah. a recruiting period ended this fall. I'm laying on the couch from the channels, and I see you guys on the – and I was riveted. I was riveted. It was great television. It was good. I loved we'll it. I don't know if anybody doing. else cared about the references, but you were, like, really hitting a chord with me. I was, I was locked in. You know, it's funny because – and Ashley will say the same thing, too, that every time we go out, we always get praise, either individual praise or, or team praise. Even the judge today came and said, Mike, I, am, I watch you and Ashley you know, all the time whenever you guys do your thing. You guys are great individually. You guys are great together as a team. But, yeah, I mean, every time we go, like, man, we love the stuff you say because Ashley, you know, he'll, he'll get worked up. He'll get excited. He'll throw some words in there, in his, and he'll use his lingo. Me, I will throw the pop culture references, whether it's movies, television. Uh, rap lyrics is a big thing. So a lot of people, you know, come up to some of these high school players right. as they're being introduced, like, oh, man, did you say this? Like, yes, that was me. <laughs> so, I mean, out, out in public, you know, they see, oh, you know, quiet, shy kind of guy. Then out here, it's just I'm a completely different animal. Yeah, I think here. you might be the sportscaster version of me because I like those kind of references too. So. We should have you on a show. We should just bring you on one day. So, you know what, we're just going to have Will the Thrill Davis out here. Um, this weekend, Super Bowl Sunday. Chiefs, Niners, your prediction, sir? I guess if I was gonna, had to go prediction, I'd have to go Chiefs. I mean, it's kind of yeah. hard to, to, deny, to deny Pat Mahomes. The guy's never had a bad game in his entire career. That's right, Mahomes, so, my homeboy. Yeah, uh, so that's hard. But I, I'm, I'm interested to see the, the matchup. I'm a huge NFL fan, and um, obviously I'm a Saints guy, so yeah. I'm very still heartbroken that they're not in it. And, so I'm, I'm a big Cowboys fan, and we haven't had anything since 95, so <laughs> it, it is what it is. At right. least, you know, they're a billion-dollar team, and they're always raking the money, even though I don't see a dime of it. But yeah, it's okay. yeah. I'm a, um, but, yeah, so, I mean, I'm interested to see if, like, the, how the different styles mesh yeah. and the contrast with the 49ers trying to run the ball and the Chiefs' run defense is not that great. So I think it could be a pretty so, good game. I, know, I, I agree with you 100%. I know Trent Dilford today came out and said that he thinks the Niners are going to just obliterate them. I don't know about all that now, but then again, we could have a situation where it's the Broncos and Seahawks, and out of nowhere this year, they just demolish. Yeah, them. right. I hope yeah. that doesn't happen because I'm no, hoping for I, a good I game. Yeah. I mean, I'll be here that was the worst Super Bowl ever. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, I thought the Niners and Chargers back in the day, in between the, the Cowboys Niners years, I thought that was bad. But Are we yeah. talking Neil O'Donnell? Was that? Uh, Who was no, the quarterback? Okay, no, wait, no, no. Wait. So Neil O'Donnell, he, he was the quarterback for the Steelers. That's right, Steelers, yeah. The Cowboys in, in Arizona. Yeah. There, um, but man, that was was that the Anthony Miller years in San Diego? That might have been. Now, yeah. now I got to go look. We got to look it up now. Yeah. All I know is that was a sweet team, and, and, <laughs> and I and I love those jerseys. Um, tragic news, you know, this Sunday came out. Of course, Kobe Bryant. We all know. I mean, I I'll be honest. I was crushed 
I mean, I sat there for like 10 minutes looking at myself. I'm like, this can't be real. Yeah. I was texting some people back in Cincinnati. Uh, my old sports director, he's a huge Kobe fan. He couldn't believe it. He even told me, you know, he, he was in tears. I'm like, there's just no way. And I kept looking, 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 looking. And, man, once I found the news, it was just a big gut to the punch. Man, uh, were you a big fan of Kobe? Yeah, Bryant? I was. Actually, uh, I used to be a big pickup basketball guy before I became a head coach. Yeah. And, um, man, the only pair of basketball shoes that are in my closet right now are Kobe's. Kobe! Yeah, so, um, yeah, I just love the way he competed, man. You could just tell he, didn't, he was relentless, even if it maybe rubbed some people the wrong way. You yeah. Know, I just, for somebody that's made that much money to, to care about night in, night out, competing and trying to win, it's just really refreshing as a, as a coach of young men, you know, to see that. And, uh, yeah, man, it, I mean, I remember, like, Princess Diana when I was a kid being, God, a, being nuts, a huge right? deal, you know, but I was, you know, like, in fifth grade or whatever. And, and this then is, OJ and yeah. all that good jazz. But this is, like, the first, you know, icon, really, that, yeah. you know, I'm mean, obviously Michael Jackson died a while back, yep. but he kind of gone off the deep God, end by that point. So you know what I mean? So, at that point in time that, yeah. uh, man, I still remember that whenever that happened because I was coming off of a plane and everybody's checking their cell phones. Like, oh, my God, Michael Jackson just died. Right, yeah. I was like, what? Because that was the same day uh, Farrah Fawcett died, too. Right, yeah. And poor Farrah Fawcett, she got, like, overlooked because, dude, the king of pop yeah. just tragically passed away. But I think that, I mean, it's, a lot of people, I don't, I don't know who knows how long they're going to take to get over, you know, this especially. But for the love and admiration for somebody, a lot, for most people who have never met. Yeah, just so revered. It's crazy, it's right? been, Yeah, I've just never seen anybody that's been so revered that yeah. die this young, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, man, it's a, definitely a, a very tragic accident. Let me ask you this. You know, what is it about Kobe Bryant's, game on and off the court you think that you know your players could actually take away from everything yeah that he's done. I, I think that just the desire just to be great at what you do you know what i mean I, I i we and we have some guys like this but the people that just constantly do everything in their power not just go hard at practice but you know drink over a gallon of water a day and get eight hours of sleep and that kind of stuff you know the guy was obsessed with being great and uh, i think that's what it takes and you see tom brady and people yep. like that doing the same thing i think that's what it takes to be great you know and uh, obviously, you have to have ability, but the ones that really transcend are the ones that, that do all those things. And I think, you know, Kobe was notorious for that kind of stuff. No, I, I couldn't agree no more. Now, before we go, I got to ask, you're a big say by the bell guy, <laughs> just like myself here. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's kind of funny because one of the first times we actually, I mean, we met each other, you know, prior to Ashley Elam's uh, wedding. Now, shout out to Ashley real fast. The man's been sick. We got to get you back in. Everybody keeps yeah, asking man, let's about go. you, right? Because this would have been an excellent <laughs> exit, because we're going to guess what? We're going to bring you back. Yeah. So that way we can, let's you know, have, you know, let's go say something else. <laughs> Only after a win. Thing. That's right. Yeah. Well, well, you got to win, right? Because, yeah. you know, this Golden Triangle, they love their winners here. But <laughs> what would you say is your favorite Say by the Bell episode? And why do you think it, it sticks? Why do you think it stands the test of time? Man, favorite Say by the Bell episode, that is. That's tough. I, you know, I think just memorable one. I don't know if it's yeah. favorite would be yeah. obviously the the uh, Jesse um, caffeine so peels. Yes, yeah, so, I mean it's got to be like <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, it, it's got a lot of drama in there. And then you know, as a fun. young younger kid at the time, you could yeah. learn something from. Right. I don't want to say drug addiction because I, I mean it's I mean technically it, it is. I mean they they tackle something that is funny because we all look back now and we're like. She was addicted to caffeine pills, but I mean, people have tragically passed all. That's through, true. You know, I shouldn't make light caffeine, of caffeine so pills, and, and should, we should you're, you're right. And NBC Saturday morning uh, programming, but um, <laughs> that's right. I mean, they're yeah. competing against like Donald Duck, and here they are. Here's Zach Morris, here's Kelly. Uh, I know one of my personal favorites was the, was the murder mystery one. But to this day, I have yet to do a murder mystery, and I keep wanting to like year after year. I'm like, I tell my wife, we got to go, we got to go, and the whole reason why is because of that stupid episode. Yeah, you got. I mean, I like. I feel like you could set that up pretty easily, right? I mean, I, I would, we live I next to the so. fourth biggest city in the United States. I mean, they got to have something, right? They, they're they're bound to have something because uh, <laughs> up in Kentucky, man, they had they would have it at museums. They uh, Maggiano's actually would do it every now and then, which I thought was pretty cool. But in Kentucky, they had a train that you could take like oh. over the hills. I mean, it was just it was beautiful. But I would see pictures of it and videos. Never did it though. Yeah, I mean, so, we got to get on that. You know? I, I have I mean, no off season date. We'll do a little double Could date. Be, right? yeah. We can bring uh, Ashley along too. We'll have uh, we'll bring our good friend Justin Kelm. He'll come along with us as well too. We'll just have a big you know date. The four horsemen out here doing our thing. That's right, Coach. I appreciate your time. Thank you so Thanks, much for Mike. coming appreciate on. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it, man. We cannot wait to have you again. Yeah, anytime. Guys, until next time, this has been 409 Sports X's and O's with Mike Kenazawson, head coach of Lamar Baseball, Will Davis. <laughs>